welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are starting the letter um, that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus known as Ephesians. And this is a wonderful, wonderful letter. And as we go through chapter 1 today, and then tomorrow you're going to read chapter 2, but tomorrow's Sunday. So make sure you go to church, make sure you go serve at your church. If you come to our church, then I'll see you tomorrow. And But please make sure you read Ephesians chapter 2 on your own. And then on Monday, we'll be doing Ephesians chapter 3. Now, the reason I say that is because today, Saturday, and on Monday, we're going to be focusing on just Paul's heart towards this church in Ephesus. And we're going to go through a couple of prayers and pleas that, 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 that Paul gives to this church. And this church is doing well. And Paul, and, and in the midst of this church doing well, Paul, Paul's prayer is like more, 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 more revelation, more grace, more power. And it's, it's, it's going to be very encouraging as we go through uh, today, chapter one, and then on Monday, chapter three. So I'm really excited to go over those. So before we get started, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we will be encouraged today through the reading of your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So Ephesians chapter 1, I want to start with verse 15 here. Because he goes through like his introductions and some of the things that he's doing. But I want to start um, right here with verse 15, right? So keep in mind, um, in, in, in these verses, Paul is saying like, I've heard of your faith. I've heard of, you know, you guys have been standing in the faith. You guys have been loving people. You guys are doing well. So he says, so with that in, with that in mind, right? This church in Ephesus is doing well. Therefore, verse 15, I want to start with verse 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So Paul's saying you guys are doing a lot of good things and you guys are loving people. And, and Paul says, and, and I give thanks to God for that. I give thanks to God for what you're doing. And, 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 and Paul's prayer is that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The uh, verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his of his inheritance in the saints. It's, it get, and it gets it gets better. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the power, according to the working of his mighty power? Verse 20, which he worked in Christ. Which he, which, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that in that which is to come. So we're going to read all this over again. That's Paul's prayer for this church who is doing well. That is Paul's prayer for this church that is doing well. See, oh my gosh, see, when, when, when you're in the will of God, you can pray prayers like this. It's different. It's different. See, I would even say, unfortunately, maybe even sadly, a lot of Christians are very, are very self-consumed in their prayers. Lord, bless my finances, Lord. And, and, and listen, and I fall into this. Actually, my wife and I just had a conversation about this a few days ago where there's things that we're praying for financially, for a house, right? We're praying, like we're praying these things and it's, it's definitely not wrong to pray for those things. But my wife was convicted and in her conviction, I was like, yeah, you're right, honey. But she was saying how, you know, we're... Or she was asking, are we seeking his blessings more than we're seeking the kingdom first? And so she, she made a list of everything that she, that, that she wants to pray for first. 
and that's for people to be changed, for his kingdom to come. And it, they're, they're all kingdom things. And so she said, you know, if we just focus on the kingdom, we know and that we trust that God's going to provide for us. And that was really good. And that was a good reminder for me. See, Paul is, 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 is talking to this church in Ephesus, right? Um, and in verse 16, um, well, verse 15, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. See, Paul doesn't say, bless them financially, bless their home. Like, he doesn't, like, ask for a physical increase. Paul asks for a spiritual increase. And here's what I want to say, is that you pray differently when you are completely satisfied by Jesus. If, if, if most of your prayer time is, God bless me, God bless me, God bless me, God bless me, God fix this, God fix this, God fix this. It's different when God satisfies all your needs, when you're walking well with Him, you're walking in righteousness, and, and, and you recognize that your foundation is in Christ. Listen to me. When you recognize that your foundation is in Jesus and your foundation isn't on God answering prayers, you will pray differently. When you walk in the Spirit, when you walk in the Spirit and you're completely satisfied in this wonderful relationship that you have with your Father, then you don't need circumstances to be okay in order for you to be okay. And Paul is a great example of this, that whether he was free or in prison, Paul walked by the Spirit and his circumstances didn't change. They didn't change who he was in Christ. And so it's amazing to see this kind of prayer for a church who's doing well. And I want us, church, to, to get to that place where it's like, wow, we're steadfast in Christ. We are, we, we, we are walking well with Him. We are loved by our Father and, and, and we live to please Him. And this is the prayer that, these are the prayers that we should be praying for, that we should be praying for our pastors, for our leaders, this is the prayer that we should be praying. You see, Paul is praying for this church, for increase in this church, in the, the church in Ephesus. And I'm asking myself, when was the last time I prayed like this for my church? When was the last time I prayed like this for my pastors? Or, ha or has my prayer life been all about me and what I want God to do for me rather than rather than my prayers being kingdom minded. And so Paul's prayer for for this church and I, and, and and I want to tell you guys we need to be praying like this for our pastors. We need to be praying like this for our leaders. Listen, are there good things happening in our church? Yeah. Are they are they praiseworthy? Yeah. Are you thankful? Because Paul gives thanks. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. So in other words, Paul is saying, in my thanks, this is how I pray for you. That the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Paul's saying, hey, you guys are doing well. I want you to know him even better. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. When we get our lives right and we walk in his calling, we walk in the center of his will, we will receive a greater, an amazing revelation of his power, our, our, our spiritual eyes being enlightened and, and, and seeing the world as He sees the world, amen, as seeing people the way He sees people, seeing ourselves the way He sees us, amen. This is, don't stop praying for yourself, don't, that's not what I'm saying. Pray for yourself, pray for your needs. You know, Jesus said, you know, ask, seek, and knock, and, and, and it will be, and the door will be open, and you will find. Like, that's not, don't get me wrong, pray those prayers. You know, you have a Father in heaven who loves you, 
right? So, so, so have, ha, have that relationship with him. Have that relationship with him. And, and he is your father. You can come to him with your needs. You can come to him with your prayers and your supplications. I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying don't do that. But as a church, I, 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 when, as, as, as people who are filled with the Spirit, moving his kingdom, these are the prayers we have to be praying that God's kingdom would come, that His will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, that we would, that we would receive uh, the knowledge and revelation of Jesus, not information, revelation. Amen? So here's what I want to say to your prayer life where you come to Jesus, add on these prayers for your pastors, these prayers for your leaders, amen? And, that, and that, this is a great prayer for you that you would have that your eyes will be enlightened, that you would have this deep revelation of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, let, let this be an, an encouraging prayer for us, Lord, where we want to have a deeper revelation of Christ Jesus. And in that deeper revelation, we'll understand how much power, how much power you've given to us because we have your spirit within us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. In the description box, there's a giving link if you guys want to become um, monthly supporters of Daily Hope. Thank you for all of you who do that. Also, our reading plan is there so you can follow along as we go through this letter letter to the Ephesians. Also, I want to know, what was your takeaway? What did the Holy Spirit speak to you? Or what was your favorite verse when you read Ephesians chapter 1? Put that in the comments section. I love reading those. Those are such a blessing um, to me. And thank you so much for participating in Daily Hope. And lastly, before I let you go today, I want to remind you that people are heart. Generosity is opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorite. And Jesus is our Lord. We won't see you tom- we'll see you tomorrow at church, but we'll see you Monday for Ephesians chapter 3.